Hello, fourth graders. Welcome back. We are doing Unit 5, Lesson 2, which is on page 181 of your book. My name is Mrs. Smith, and thank you for joining me. So today we're talking, we're continuing with uh, learning about the metric system. Yesterday we focused more on the meters, which is the unit of length, like measuring how long something is, right? Today we're focusing a little bit more on uh, liquid volume, which is like, like how much a container, oops, container can hold. Like this is a cup that can hold, I think, doesn't say, can hold a certain, like maybe 24 ounces or something like that. Um, so think about your water bottles, think about, you know, the jugs of liquids that you buy, like milk or oat milk or something. And then mass, which is kind of like weight. Sort of pretty much weight for most purposes. Um, the good thing about the metric system, though, is no matter which type of thing you're measuring, whether it's length or volume or mass, all these units that you learned, these prefixes, stay the same. So basically, you learn one main measuring unit, like for liquid volume, it's the liter. And then you can apply all these different prefixes, like how there's a milliliter, and that's a little teeny tiny little bit, Oop, a thousandth of a liter, in the same way that a millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. So all the prefixes stay the same. For liquid volume, it's a liter. For distance, meter. And then for mass, it's gram. Kilogram, milligram. Basically, it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go through some of these different exercises and get familiar with using grams. Miss Lee's class cut a two liter plastic bottle in half to make a one liter jar. They marked the outside to show equal parts. How many milliliters of water will fit in the jar? So, if, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If we're assuming that this, if they're gonna fill it all the way up to that line there, if there are ten pops, then, and this is one liter, we know that in one liter, there are 1,000 milliliters. So all the way to the top, there's gonna have, there's gonna be 1,000 milliliters with the little M and the capital L. How many of these jars will fill a kiloliter container? Explain why. Well, in one kiloliter, there are 1,000 liters. If this amount is one liter, how many of these could fit in a kiloliter? 1,000, right? 1,000 jars because... 1,000 liters equals one kiloliter. It's just so nice that it's all based on 10 and 100 and 1,000. Um, complete the table. So deciliters, deciliters are this one. It's a tenth of a thing, right? So in three liters, you multiply it by 10 to find the number of deciliters. Because it's tenth, right? So three liters is 30 deciliters, five. You're gonna multiply that five by 10, and what is five times 10? It's 50. Seven, what are you gonna multiply the seven by to figure out how many deciliters? By 10, of course. And what is seven times 10? 70. For 12, well, you start with your 12. What do you multiply 12 liters by to find out how many deciliters? By 10. What do you get? 12 tens or 120. Okay, now we're lab labeling this number line, converting from liters to milliliters. So in zero liters, there are zero milliliters. In two liters, there are 2,000 milliliters. Four liters, 4,000. Six liters, guess what? 6,000 milliliters. Eight liters, 8,000 milliliters. 10 liters, 10,000 milliliters. Isn't that nice? 
Got a puzzle penguin. Remember, the reason we have puzzle penguin is so you can identify a commonly made mistake. Dear math students, today I had to solve this problem. Meredith wanted to make some punch for a party. The recipe to make the punch called for three liters of fruit juice, two liters of apple juice, and one liter of grape juice. How many milliliters of juice is needed for the recipe? I said the recipe calls for 600 milliliters of juice. Here's how I solved the problem. So, okay, he's got the three liters of fruit juice, two liters of apple juice, one liter of grape juice. That's all good. So he has six liters total. But then he multiplied six by 100. But I thought, oh, yes. Of course, there are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So rather than multiplying by 100, he found out the centiliter amount, which isn't really commonly used. We need to multiply by 1,000 instead. So we'll say, whoops. There uh, are... Actually, 1,000 ml per liter. 6 times 1,000 equals 6,000 milliliters. That's it. Simple mistake. Okay, now it says draw a table to show the conversion from liters to milliliters for each type of juice needed. So, starting with the three liters of fruit juice, how many milliliters? If you multiply three by a thousand, what do you get? Three thousand milliliters. Okay, next one, two liters of, I think, apple juice. Two times a thousand. A thousand milliliters. Uh, one liter one times a thousand one thousand mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then the six six liters six thousand name another way you could show the conversion from liters to milliliters for each type of juice you could use one of these little bars right a bar graph what do they call them that it's a number line, I guess. Number line. <coughs> okay. And now, continuing with this logical method, we are now turning to mass. So, uh, this is how things are weighed. And with uh, grams, like... In, in the customary system, you might think pounds or ounces, but we're talking metrics, so we're talking grams. Um, how many milligrams are equal to one gram? A milligram is a one thousandth of a gram, so there are one thousand milligrams in one gram. One thousand milligrams. A milligram would be an amount of something like like a tiny amount of a pill, you know, any tiny, like in, in some medicine, there's like 400 milligrams, 200 milligrams, very small. How many grams are equal to one kilogram? Well, a thousand grams, right? Kilo, 1,000 grams is one kilogram. So 1,000 grams. If you weighed one milliliter of water, you would find that its mass is equal to one gram. Isn't that neat? Now, that's only true for water because water is a, um, it's like based on that, <laughs> like that's where it came from. But uh, the liter thing, the milliliter and liters, it's um, liquid volume, how much space a, a liquid is taking up, not how much it weighs. So um, some liquids, might weigh less or more but take up the same amount of space as you know water but it's really cool that one milliliter weighs one gram is the gram of a small 
Is the gram a small or large unit of measurement? Explain, explain your thinking. It's pretty small, unless, I mean, yeah, it's pretty small. It's like a paper clip, right? And for most people, we're dealing with things bigger than paper clips, you know? Like if you're, if you're weighing out ingredients to bake a cake, you would have a couple hundred grams. So it's pretty small. But if you're a scientist and you're like putting in the tiniest amount of a chemical into the tiniest amount of something else, you know, then maybe you want to start using milligrams or centigrams. So it's fairly small. For some things, like I said, though, it's a little bit too big and you want to use something smaller. So now we're practicing converting from grams to centigrams to find the number of centigrams. If you know grams, you just multiply it by 100. So four grams is 400 centigrams. Eight grams is eight times 100, so 800. Centigrams. 12 times 100. The cent, remember, is like how many cents in a dollar? Cent means 100. So 1200 centigrams. 15 times 100 equals 1500. Or 1500 centigrams. We're going to keep converting on this number line. You can use either a table or a number. We're just times things now, multiplying things by 1,000 because we're converting from kilograms to grams. The so 3 kilograms is going to be 3,000 grams. 4 kilograms is 4,000 grams. 5 kilograms is 5,000 grams. Okay. So, go ahead and practice on this page uh, converting some metric units. Hopefully it's making sense. You're totally allowed to look back in this chart to see what you need to multiply by. I would highly recommend you do. You're just going to become more comfortable with it with practice. Okay? All right. Bye-bye, everybody.